Valentine's season is kind of a rough time to talk about cheating. But there's a form of infidelity that is happening more than ever, and that's financial cheating. Hiding or lying about your spending. Financial and tax professional George Velia is here with a moral on this. This happens all through, like even starting with dating, all the way through all retirement. Way, all the way through your lifestyle, all the lifestyles. Over, 30, over a third of the people today admit that, that they are committing infidelity, whether it's hiding credit cards or accounts or, or spending. It's, it's, it's over, there's over 7 million people that have accounts that their spouse doesn't know about. Hidden, I mean, sometimes it may have to do with other infidelity. Correct. When you think hiding Correct. money. Right. Uh, more men than women, women than men? Actually, the, the, the fact is that more men hide than women, according to Money Magazine's recent study, and they're okay if their spouse does. But Mars, Venus, women are not okay with that. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Well, we're going to show you the different phases of money talk, Correct. starting with dating. Right. You, you should talk about this when you're just dating. Right, it's not, hi, I'm Gemini, you know, and I have college debt. But, but as the relationship goes on, if we're going to get serious, we need to expose everything like that because it has okay. an honest conversation now, whether it's your first go around or your third. Okay. And it makes sense that you need to establish honesty early. Right. And we have a, on billiotax.com on our website, we have a financial compatibility questionnaire. There's okay. no good answer, no bad answer. It's just how, how do we relate? Financial compatibility. Oh, imagine that, right? Imagine that. Now, so now we get married. Right. You say we should pool our money. To a degree, yes and no. What we need to do is, again, if, we've, if we're going through the dynamics, we need to know we have a pool of money that's paying for everything. So we don't have, I make more than you, we don't have that contest. And then we can have some of your own money for spending on gifts or charities but and that kind of stuff. But have some money that you put together. It's an operation. It's a business. Your marriage is a business. It's a partnership. Okay. And so we pool the money so that we have that. And then we both make sure things are covered. And then we should have a meeting monthly, just like we have a date night, spend an hour on the bills, make sure everything's covered, we know what's happening, and that kind of thing. And that would be a sexy night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Parenthood. Okay, we're, yes. we're, we're a mom and dad now, and um, it's going to cost a lot to send a little baby to college. Yeah, my, my son Bryce is having uh, their first baby in, in April. And when he was born, college was, people were joking, it was going to be $100,000. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be $220,000 for kids born now, or if they go to public school, $500,000. Mm. Best be saving now. Okay. Now, All like right. tomorrow, today. Golden years. Golden years. In retirement, don't retire at the same time Correct. as your spouse. Right. Several reasons why not to. Staggering it allows you to maybe keep health insurance going. You can put more money in your retirement accounts. Your Social Security goes larger. Plus the fact that if you retire together, you get to be together 24 hours a day, That's seven what days I a want. week. <laughs> I really want that. I like who I married. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm speechless now. Thank you, George. You